The objective should be crisp, clear, and to the point. The way to demonstrate your clarity of direction or apparent clarity is to have the first major topic of your resume to be your objective. Ideally, your resume should be pointed toward conveying why you are the perfect candidate for one specific job or job title. Good advertising is directed toward a very specific target audience. When a car company is trying to sell their inexpensive compact to an older audience, they show grandpa and grandma stuffing the car with happy shiny grandchildren and talk about how safe and economical the car is. When they advertise the exact same car to the youth market, they show it going around corners on two wheels with plenty of drums and power cords thundering in the background. The same way, you must also focus your resume objective according to the job or company you are applying for. Targeting your resume requires that you be absolutely clear about your career direction or at least that you appear to be clear. If you aren't clear where you are going, you wind up whether the winds of chance blow you or not. You would be wise to use this time of change to design your future career so you have a clear target that will meet your goals and be personally fulfilling. Even if you are a little vague about what you are looking for, you cannot let your uncertainty show. With a non-existent, vague or overly broad objective, the first statement you make to a prospective employer says you are not sure this is the job for you. Let's understand it with a real life scenario. Suppose the owner of a small software company puts an ad in the newspaper seeking an experienced software salesperson. A week later, they have received 500 resumes. The applicants have a bewildering variety of backgrounds. The employer has no way to knowing whether any of them are really interested in selling software. They know that many of the resumes they received are from people who are just using a shotgun approach, casting their seed in the winds. Then they come across a resume in the pile that starts with the following. A software salesperson in an organization seeking an extraordinary record of generating new accounts, exceeding sales target, and enthusiastic customer relationships. This wakes them up. They are immediately interested. This first sentence conveys some very important and powerful messages, which is, I want exactly the job you are offering. I am a superior candidate because I recognize the qualities that are most important to you and I have them. I want to make a contribution to your company. This is the message. The objective is throwing. And this is how the company which is really looking for what they want gets in the candidate from the objective section itself. This works well because the employer is smart enough to know that someone who wants to do exactly what they are offering will be much more likely to succeed than someone who doesn't. And that person will probably be a lot more pleasant to work with as well. Second, this candidate has done a good job of establishing why they are the perfect candidate in their first sentence. They have thought about what qualities would make a candidate stand out? They have started communicating that they are that person immediately. What's more, they are communicating from the point of view of making a contribution to the employer. They are not writing from a self-centered point of view. Even when people are savvy enough to have an objective, they often make the mistake of saying something like, a position where I can hone my skills as a great artist or something similar. The employer is interested in hiring you for what you can do for them, 
not for fulfilling your private goals and agenda. Let's now understand the two-point strategy of objective writing. First, decide on a specific job title for your objective. First, make a list of answers to the questions. Say, how can I demonstrate that I am the perfect candidate? Second, what are the two or three qualities or abilities or achievements that would make a candidate stand out as truly exceptional for that specific job. The person in the previous slide that we discussed recognized that the prospective employer being a small growing software company would be very interested in candidates with an ability to generate new accounts. So they made that the very first point they got across in their resume. Second, make it to the point. Do not use fluffy phrases that are obvious or do not mean anything such as allowing the ability to enhance potential and utilize experience in new challenges, etc. An objective may be broad and still somewhat undefined in some cases, such as a mid-level management position in the hospitality or entertainment industry. Remember, your resume will only get a few seconds of attention at its best. You have to generate interest right away in the first sentence that lay their eyes on. Having an objective statement that really sizzles as highly effective and it's simple to do. For example, an XX position in an organization where YY and ZZ would be needed. XX is the name of the position you are applying for. And Ys and Zs are the most compelling qualities, abilities or achievements that will really make you stand out above the crowd of applicants. Your previous research to find out what is most important to the employer will provide the information to fill you Ys and Xs for your objective writing. If you are applying for several different positions, you should adapt your resume to each one. It is important to have several different resumes, each with a different objective, each specifically crafted for a different type of position. You may even want to change some parts of your resume for each job you apply for. Have an objective that is perfectly matched with the job you are applying for. Always remember you're writing a self-advertising copy not your life story. It is sometimes appropriate to include your objective in your summary section rather than have a separate objective section. The point of using an objective is to create a specific psychological response in the mind of the reader. If you are making a career change or have a limited work history, you want the employer to immediately focus on what you are going to do. If you are making a career change or have a limited work history, you want the employer to immediately focus on where you are going rather than where you have been. You, if you are looking for another job in your present field, it is more important to stress your qualities, achievements and abilities first. Here are a few examples of separate objective sections. I'll read out few for you. Director of marketing in an organization where a strong track record of expanding market share and internet savvy is needed. Senior manager with a bank that offers the opportunity to use my expertise in commercial real estate, lending and strategic planning and others as well. These are a few of the examples of a very good objective, which is to the point and which is to the need of the employer. So when you are crafting your objective section for your resume, you can see these examples and craft it somewhat like this. It will be helpful for you. And if you can do it better, nothing better than that.